Well, what's up everybody? It's Justin at s &K Greenhouse and I am back at Bruce Duncan's house today. I am so excited for this. I'm, the last video uh -huh. we did went nuts. Yeah, it was I good. mean, people uh -huh. have really responded to your yard. So thank you so much for meeting with me again and uh, just taking the time to show your yard off. I am tickled to death to have you. Well, what we're going to do today, um, it's we're going to give a little mini fall garden tour what he's done is he's transitioned all of his summer stuff into more fall stuff. So we're going to start with the vegetable garden and then we're going to go see some uh, some more things in his front yard that he's transitioned. And uh, I'm ready to let's get this thing started. That How about sounds you? good. I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Oh. Well, Justin, when you were here in July, this was all summer vegetables. We had green beans, squash, cucumbers, corn. Yes, um, sir. I remember we had uh, I had bush type green beans in the bed. I had a uh, pole type green beans growing up the sides you might remember oh i do and but what is happening now is the transition from a summer garden into a cool season garden and you, you know how it is around here we're liable to get a very cold winter and we're liable to get a mild winter that is so true and uh, if it's a mild winter this stuff will really do good if it's a very cold winter it's kind of iffy we're, we're entering the month of october right now and the weather has just started to really cool off, but it's not been cool for that long. I think just two weeks ago, we were yeah. in the 90s. Oh yeah. So we are transitioning into fall, but it's not like we've had this beautiful 70 degree weather for very long. No, so. no. And you know, last October was hot. Oh my Do goodness. You remember? There was a day, I think it was in the upper 90s. It was close to 100. <laughs> yes. I think it did hit 100. Welcome to the Carolinas, folks. But that's our weather. Again, we're in mm -hmm. zone 7B in the south. Uh, Faustin, North Carolina. Uh, when you were here last, Justin and Alex, we had green beans growing up the side of the walls here. They are gone, and I now have Swiss chard growing down here. And Swiss chard is wonderful to eat. It's great in salads, and you can also cook it like you do collards, which we're going to do here shortly. Uh, you can also do a sauteed, like like sauteed spinach or cream spinach. You can do that with Swiss chard, which is good too. And if you remember, uh, last time you were here, we talked about the fact that I like to plant flowers in, yes. in, in my- You had uh, the marigolds. I had marigolds <clears throat> and uh, I had a few other different things. Now in the winter, of course, I'm not planting flowers for pollinators, but like I said last time, uh, when I come down to the vegetable garden, I like not only to come down and, and get the food I'm going to eat, but I like to enjoy looking. Feel good. Feel good. Take a load off. Oh, ease that stress. Great. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. But we have orange colored pansies down here, which should bloom all winter up until next spring and look really good. And I like it against, this is a bright lights Swiss chard which comes in different, you, you can tell the stalks have different colors. Oh, yeah. You can just look at those stems and, and you know why they call it bright lights. I, yeah. I just, there's more ornamental factor there than it oh, almost is beautiful. for, for uh, as an edible. I'm as happy with it as an ornamental plant as I am an eating plant. Now we have in these two beds, last time you were here, we had green beans, bush type green beans. Now we've moved from that to broccoli. Oh, and don't you have some broccoli planted? I have some broccoli planted. My family loves broccoli. So I do too. My, my girls will come over and steal food from us too. So <laughs> I like to plant. You plenty. got 18 broccoli plants planted in that one little raised bed. That's right. That's so amazing. 36 plants all together. And uh, now broccoli is a little suspect to very cold weather. Uh, frost is okay, but if it gets below freezing, I'll have to cover these. Okay. Do you remember when you were here last, we talked about the fact I'm, I designed these beds with these uh, boards here. I can put a heavy piece of plastic over them. Okay, so you'll begin to cover these when the temperatures are dropping down like in the 30s? If it gets below freezing, I'll cover them. Okay. Uh, broccoli's okay in the cold. It, uh, Actually, if it's around freezing or a little below it, it'll be fine. It, but sometimes, you know how November is around here, it can get in the teens. Oh, yeah. And uh, if that happens, I'll have to cover them. What I know broccoli, they're like really heavy feeders. What are you doing as far as, is, is your soil just rich enough to, to get this thing to go to harvest or are you adding anything to it? Well, I, I am. Now the soil is rich and we talked about that the last time you were here. Uh, mm -hmm. This is composted soil that I make myself. And uh, I take some manure from the chicken pen, and uh, I also add a little bit of, of uh, fertilizer to it. 
Okay. Uh, for the broccoli, if, if it were green beans, uh, I wouldn't add anything. But like you said, broccoli is a heavy feeder, especially nitrogen. Gotcha. And of course, chicken manure is good for nitrogen. And some of the I put some heavy nitrogen fertilizer, not much, but just a little. And okay. It helps. And you can see it's good looking broccoli. Absolutely. And then over here, I've got my lettuce growing. And I have uh, blue pansies mixed in with them. Is this a head lettuce? That's a head lettuce, but it produces a lot of loose leaves. That's a butternut crunch. Okay. It's a, I, we love it. And uh, do you know what growing up, I grew up in the country, in the low country of South Carolina, and we used to eat something called Chrissy Greens. Are you familiar with yeah, that? I've heard of them. I don't know that I've had them. Though. Well, it's lettuce that you grow like that. Uh, usually my grandmama would take, when she would fry up some country ham, she would take the strickling, what we call strickling gravy. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's the juice from the country ham, and she might chop up a little onion, then you take your lettuce leaves and put in that frying pan with that uh, ham juice in it. So you're not just and waiting on these to head, you're going to eat the oh, leaves prior? Absolutely. Or as it's growing, you're, you're it's pulling growing. the outside leaves off and harvesting those as well. Absolutely. And, and, and this lettuce will do fine. I may have to cover it. Uh, when really cold weather hits around Christmas and after, it won't, it won't survive that out here. Gotcha. But it'll be good up until then. Awesome. I still have my begonias left over from the summer over here, and I'm getting ready to take those out and put something else there. And they're still looking pretty good. Oh, they look fine. They'll be fine up until the first frost, which are hard to here. beat begonias. Oh, it is. They do great. Uh, they can take dry weather, wet weather, hot, cold. Uh, I have now. Here's what I've done. I've got all my collards over here. And this is the, f I, I didn't plant these all at the same time. Back in August, late August, I planted these. And then about a month later, I planted these. And then last week I planted these collards. So they're in, they're in different growth periods right now. That's why these are so small. Got you, planting in succession. Yes, and these collards, if you notice them, they're skinny looking. They don't have many leaves on them. Mm -hmm. And you and I talked about this earlier today, but. Uh, when her, when the uh, leftover of Hurricane Ian that hit Florida the other day, when it came up through the Carolinas, uh, Justin, it the wind back here, you know, because <laughs> it was bad at the nursery too. <laughs> but I stood at the back door and watched the wind Friday uh, whipping itself back here, and I, I about cried because I thought I was going to lose half my stuff. <laughs> and uh, it, it was literally. Uh, I can't believe how neat everything still looks back well, it here looks considering. Well, I came back here and, and Saturday morning and cleaned it up. Bruce, uh, do you, what do you do like if you start to have pest problems? I know a lot of people have questions about, I know when it's still kind of warm and you're transitioning into fall, sometimes these leafy greens, will, you'll find holes in them maybe from worms or caterpillars. Well, there's a perfect example there. And is that from uh, just like a a cabbage worm or a looper or something like that? In this case, it was. Uh, my granddaddy used to always tell me, don't plant your collards until the middle of September. Okay. And, uh, and, and I know why he said that, because I planted these the middle of September, and you can see, <laughs> see how the difference. Look at that. I know. That is. Uh, see how nice the leaves look. So is it just because of the season, the, the, the worms and caterpillars, they're kind of phasing out and then. That's it. What, what happened, I planted these uh, back in August and I knew, I knew when I planted them that it was going to be suspect to a uh, cabbage worm. Yeah. There's also another worm that's got blue and yellow stripes. I forget what I know which one you're talking worm about. Or army worm or something. But anyway, yeah. uh, I had problems with both of those on these collards. Now, you can spray. If you want to spray a poison, uh, uh, an insecticide, you can do that. But I don't like to spray chemicals. Especially on leaves you're about to... And, and on a leafy vegetable that I'm going to eat, I don't want to do so that. So are you hand-picking these I'm off hand, for the most part? That's I, what I do at home. That's what I do too. And uh, when I come out here and I notice like a leaf like this, or even you see that leaf, mm -hmm. uh, I picked some off this, I believe it was yesterday morning. But what, what happens when you start seeing your leaves getting eat if you'll look on the underside of them, that's where you'll spot the worm. Okay, that's and, good to know. And uh, you won't see the worm, and sometimes the worm, Alex, if you can get the camera down in there, sometimes you, you'll look at a plant that's been eaten, you won't see it, but if you'll look down in the very center, they'll be down in there. 
and I, what I do is just pick them off and destroy them and get rid of them. That's what happened to this bed. So a combination of cabbage worm and Hurricane Ian. <laughs> <laughs> now, Alex, standing behind you are mustard greens along that bed there. A lot of people that grow greens do not grow mustard greens, and I don't know why. But you talk to anybody who does grow mustard greens, and they just, they couldn't live without them. Yeah, I, I like them myself, but I don't use them as much as I do some of the other greens. I, I don't either. Uh, we by far eat more collars than any leafy vegetable I grow, but I'm going to tell you something. If you want something good, take you when, you, when you cook a pot of collard greens, get you some mustard greens and add to it. Whoo, Okay, son. I'm going to do that on the oh, next one. Oh, let me tell you, it's so good, you'll sash your mother-in-law. Oh. <laughs> if she comes to the house, I'm serious, if she comes to the house and gets mouthy, not only will you sass her, but you'll do it with confidence. <laughs> I'm serious. That's some, that's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. I'm serious, too. Okay. I'm joking. I know I'm joking. I'm being funny. <laughs> but you're serious. But I'm serious, too. Awesome. I love some mustard greens. Well, thank you for that tip. I'm going to try that. Yeah, that's where we are now in the transition of my vegetable garden. And, you know, when you were here last, I just have had time to do it. But you see this big space here. I had intended by now to have a couple of more beds in here. Uh -huh. And I'm going to build some back here. I've got something I'm getting ready to do back here, too. But just haven't had time to do it. I told you how bad the wind was whipping back here. Do you, do you notice this new board across through there? Oh yeah. Do you see where that board's broke? Hurricane Ian literally broke the board that was there in half. Oh my Broke it in goodness. half. See, you can see right there where it's broke. And the best way to fix it, I just put, took a new board and scabbed it. But I just wanted to show that to show you how bad the wind was back here. When you were here in the summer, if you remember back here, I had those red coleus plants. Yes, I do remember that. And how those beautiful were so those good. were. Well, those up until Friday, they were still beautiful back here. And I had cut them back not long after y'all were here in July. And I had cut them down to about this tall and they had gotten back up to about here. But Hurricane Ian literally broke, it, it whipped back here so bad it broke them. Wow. And I, I could have left them but it, by the time they would have come back out and looked good, we would have started getting frost, so I just dug them up. Gotcha. Now, let me show you something that I do, Justin. Uh, this, this flower bed is also transitioning into cool weather, and I have violas and pansies planted here. I have the uh, true blue violas on each side here, and I have the crystal yellow pansy in the middle. But something else I do, I like to do, is I like to grow leafy green vegetables in my cool weather flower beds. You're always intermingling. That, that's something that you do that I don't see anybody else doing. Not many people and do. And it makes perfect sense because that, that, that's going to look good here in about a week or two a when few it really weeks, gets rooted in. Th these will be up to here in a few weeks. It'll look, boy, they look really good. And uh, not only can I come and pick off of them and eat them, but they look good mixed with the flowers. Now, they actually call this foodscaping. Foodscaping. It's called foodscaping. Okay. And let me tell you, I never heard. I have. I, I'm serious. I have been doing this for over 20 years. And a few years ago, I was watching a video on television, growing a greener world. Yep. Uh, Joe Lampley, I believe is. I think that's Lample. Joe Lample. Anyway, I was watching his show and he was interviewing this girl up in Raleigh, who's a well-known agriculturalist. Her, na her first name's Bree, I can't remember her last name. And he was introducing this new concept of foodscaping. Now this was a few years ago. <laughs> and I, I said, Julie, look at that. I said, I've been doing that for over 20 <laughs> years. So I was, I was trendy 20 years ago. I was cool when trendy wasn't cool. <laughs> you, that's right. <laughs> well, it makes perfect sense. Uh -huh. I, I, don't, I, I completely see why you do it. In fact, I need to do more of it myself. Here's another problem, Alex, of Hurricane Ian last week. This orange marmalade, when y'all were here back in July, now the plants are fine, 
the, if you remember, these were covered in orange blossoms. Hurricane Ian literally stripped the blossoms off of them. Oh, That's how hard the wind was blowing back here. I'm really surprised some of these other flowers. Look at get, these. Is these New Guinean patients? Uh, uh, or sun patients? Sun patients. Wow. I mean, they just went through a hurricane? We, yeah. And I, and that's why Look I say that. I don't that know. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look, here's tree limbs still in my flowers. <laughs> I mean, this. And look, you can see, look at how these are broken. Yeah, they just, it did, uh, they took a beating. They, oh, it was awful back here. Now remind me again, what, is this salvia? Blue salvia. Do you remember the variety on this? Is it Victoria Blue? Victoria Blue. I just grabbed that bee, I didn't, <laughs> I literally just grabbed that bee. Oh, I know, look, and there's another bee on this one too. Uh, they love, they love salvia, I don't know. But there's you. Will that one come back every year? Sometimes it does. It it's iffy. It's a little iffy out the, here in the open, I guess. The further south you go, the more reliable it comes back. The further north you go, the less reliable. Gotcha. And, and we're kind of in that in between zone. I got you, <clears throat> Bruce. I don't know if you remember this, but we walked through here last video. So many people commented they wanted to see your chickens a little. Can we see your chickens sure. a little bit closer? Now, <laughs> Just for the people wanting to see the chickens. Let me tell you, Julie and I went to the beach back in August, and when we come back, I had three of my hens found dead. Oh, no. So I'm a little, I don't have as many as I had when y'all were here. And we don't know something killed them because uh, it, it was obvious they, they had been attacked by something. But I don't know what it was. I just love it, Bruce. You got, you just got a homestead out here. We we haven't been cool enough, long enough for your maples to start turning colors. So no. Now wait a minute. This one back here is. Oh yeah, the coral bark. The coral bark. I, as a matter of fact, I saw it a while ago, and I thought, man, I got to show Justin this. Uh, it's starting. Alex, if you can get up close and, and show those leaves, you can see where uh, a month ago this was a little darker green. It's always a light chartreuse, light green color, even in the summer, but it's it's come it's starting to turn. And and if you look at the bark, it's starting to turn. Yeah. And and it's not even really cold yet. But once it it does get cold, that'll be like a, a very bright coral oh, color. Oh, it'll be very bright. Gotcha. And these leaves will be four times more intense with their color too. So. Gotcha. But that's the only thing right now that's beginning to show well, any color. I, I hope I get to come back and do a complete fall tour. Oh, absolutely. Uh, whenever mm -hmm. the weather really cools off and we can start to see the, the colors changing. I know it's a long way from Christmas. I don't look at it as Christmas lights yet, but I still love to put lights on. It feels good when you walk by, it, even in October. I, I love that feeling. Oh, I love it too. I'll show you more foodscaping up here. <laughs> I got my first bed of pansies planted up here. I, I'm oh, getting yeah. ready to plant some more. So these are just newly planted. You no, I just planted them right before the hurricane came. And uh, that it scared me a little bit that we might get too much water, but we didn't. Sometimes pansies don't like too much water. Cabbage. Are we foodscaping again? We're foodscaping now. Check I, out that cabbage. I had hoped before you came today, I, I, I bought some pansies to put here, but I just didn't have time to put them out. Okay, I can see where your bed is. But so I, that, that's gonna be beautiful with the cabbage in the background. Right. And this will actually head and you can eat that, right? Oh, absolutely. So it's not just the ornamental kind. You're, you're actually using edible cabbage as ornamental. Exactly. And this yes. is uh, Savoy cabbage. I love it. It's a it's a milder cabbage. Sweet actually. Some people say it's sweet, but I, I love it. It makes a big head. It too, makes a don't big it? head and it's a loose head. It's not like a stone head cabbage. It's hard as a rock. Gotcha. Uh, Savoy's a great cabbage. I love is that Savoy what this cabbage. is right here too? Yes, I have three beds of Savoy. Now I'm I love <laughs> mm -hmm. how that's just intermingled in there. These Vinca, uh, they've been here all summer. They're getting ready to come up and I'm getting ready to uh, put pansies or violas here. This dragon's breast celosia, it's been here all summer and it's oh, getting, yeah. it's I, I, hate, I hate to take it up. It'll probably last till November, uh, middle of November. But the yeah. thing is to get the other stuff that I want to grow during the cold months, 
I got to get them rooted in. That's what I have trouble with. Mm -hmm. I just pulled up a bunch of beautiful lantana. I hate to do it. I but, have too. But you want to get your pansies and violas rooted in or they're not going to be able to withstand. Right. Well, they, they'll well, make it, but, but they won't thrive like they will if you get them planted in early. And get a root system going. That's right. So some that one day this week, here this is the first full week in October, and uh, I'll be digging this up. I'll be digging up the vinca. I'll be digging up that red celosi over there. All that's coming up and I'll be putting other stuff in here. But I did get the cabbage going. They've been in the ground about three weeks now. And uh, they have really, you can see how they've grown well. Oh yeah, this cabbage, it's showing out, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It is. And I'll have uh, some viola planted in front of them and when you come back to do another fall video probably late this month early november mm -hmm. when i have the other stuff planted here along with the green vegetables it's an outstanding look you'll be impressed i can't wait all right guys thank you so much for tuning in this is going to wrap up uh, the fall tour and the transitioning period we are coming back out to do a full complete garden tour once the weather cools off and these leaves start turning and colors start changing bruce Thank you again so much for, for doing these videos. I appreciate it. I know our audience is appreciating it. We're learning so much from you. And uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Oh, good, 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 good. We love guests here at the Duncan <laughs> oh, House. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, until next time, become a plant person. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you want me to say it.